Hey guys, this is Abe Lucky, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make some analog horror visuals. I'm making this video because I see a lot of analog horrors out nowadays that visually don't quite capture the aesthetic that the 80s and 90s VHS footage had. So I'm just wanting to make a tutorial on how to better replicate that. Um, this is a tutorial that I definitely needed when I started making analog horror. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I have my own analog horror series called String Theory TV, and it's on YouTube. Uh, I'll put the link in the description for anyone who wants to check it out. But long story short, uh, when I first started making analog horror, I thought that the way you made this VHS tape style look is by taking your footage and slapping some grain textures on it, and boom, it, it looks like analog footage, right? Well, what I've learned is that that's not really how it looked back in the day, and it takes a lot more than just slapping on some grain footage and using some creepy text to replicate that look. So today I'm going to be showing you guys how to do that. All right, so we're going to go ahead and hop on into it. And the first bit of advice that I have is not to reference other analog horrors uh, as far as the visual aspect goes, like if you're trying to make an authentic VHS style uh, video, I personally wouldn't recommend looking at how other analog horrors look. Um, that might sound a little bit counterintuitive, that might sound a little bit weird, but the reason I'm saying that is because a lot of analog horror creators didn't grow up in the 90s uh, when VHS tapes were really popular, and so the way that they make videos is it doesn't look quite like it actually did back in the 90s. So the biggest piece of advice I can give is to actually reference what these videos looked like. You can go to YouTube and type in 90s, uh, 90s footage and there's a whole playlist right off the bat that has uh, videos that were made in the 90s. Also another thing to realize is that the look of your video is really going to depend on what time period your video is set in. So if your video is set in the 80s, it's going to look different than how it looks in the 90s. In the 80s, there was a bit more blurring going on. You had a lot more of like the vinyl crackle. Well, vinyl crackle actually died out in like maybe the 60s and 70s, but uh, the 80s still had some of that film grain that started to die out in, let's say, the 90s and the 2000s. Um, so that's one thing that you really want to pay attention to is what era of filmmaking had what? What what did these videos incorporate? Um, so in today's video, I'm going to be focusing more so on maybe like a 90s footage style video. Um, and this this video is going to be for After Effects. Make sure that your comp is set to 1920 by 1440. That is going to give it a 4x3 aspect ratio. For those who don't know, all analog footage up until more recently was filmed at a 4x3 aspect ratio, as opposed to 1920 by 1080. You also want to make sure that your composition is set to 24 frames a second, and that the duration is 30 seconds long. So before we work with our adjustment layer, what we want to do is we want to grab some footage. Uh, I recommend making your own footage. Typically, that's what I do for my videos. Occasionally, I'll use stock presets if needed, but I generally like to just have my own footage, if at all possible. But once you get the footage that you want, uh, just go ahead and throw it into uh, After Effects. Um, all of your imports will be on this panel right here that says Project. And I, for the, for the sake of this video, I just grabbed this video from online uh, just as an example to show you what this effect will do. All right, so here we go. So the first thing that you want to do um, is you want to create an adjustment layer. So the way you go to an adjustment layer is you go up here, you go to layer, go to new, and then hit adjustment layer, and a new one will be created. For those of you who don't know, uh, with an adjustment layer, anything that is below that layer is going to be affected by the effects that are put on it. Anything that's above the adjustment layer isn't going to be affected. I already have one, so I'm not going to worry about 
putting in all of the uh, all of the assets that I already have in there. Um, so there's a couple of different uh, effects that you want to apply to this adjustment layer. So the first effect that I would recommend putting on this layer, uh, it's the only third party plugin that you really need for this type of tutorial. It's not really necessary, but it helps to give it more of that authentic look. But it's this plugin called Quick Chromatic Aberration 2. It's a free download and there's tutorials on like where to put it in your plugins folder and all that. But basically, once you get this plugin installed, you want to add it onto your adjustment layer. And here you can see the settings that I have on here. So I have it set to red and blue. For the position, I have it at 2%. Uh, you don't have to do anything to the rotation or the scale. Uh, the blur, you can actually keep that. Unmult is turned off and repeat edge pixels is turned on. The next plugin that you want is called directional blur. And if, in case you don't know, you can just go to this little effects and presets tab here. And in this little search bar, you can search for all of these various, uh, these various effects. So just type in directional blur. It'll be, oh, that scared me. <laughs> um, if you type in directional blur, it'll be right there. And in directional blur, all you want to do is increase the blur length to 10. And that's all that you want to do. Um, also, you want to make sure that you have a Gaussian blur on here and put that at 12. And uh, before I go any further, I, I need to clarify that you can really adjust these as you need to. These aren't strict rules that have to be on every single analog horror video. You can play around with these values and get different results. So, you know, just for example, if you turn up the blur, you can see that, well, uh, there we go. You can see that it's a lot more blurry. Um, so just play around with the values to whatever you think is best. After that, you want to put on a sharpen. I like to have the amount at 1200, but you, once again, you can play around with this value as needed. Uh, for example, if you bumped it up to say 1500, give it a minute to update. It's subtle, but you can see that there's a little bit of a difference there. It's really subtle though, so I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but let's like put on say 200 and see what that does. See how it's a lot more blurry now. And really what I've learned is that the sharpen and blur values are really what gives it that authentic look. I didn't really know that until I saw this one video that I'll put in the description. And uh, really this sharpen value uh, is, is really important to getting this authentic analog look. Last but not least, uh, we want to put on a hue and saturation. And we want to turn down the saturation to negative six and bump up the hue uh, 10 degrees. And that will help give it that authentic analog saturation value. So something that not a lot of people talk about when it comes to analog footage is the audio. And the audio is actually a really important aspect of making your mock analog footage believable. Um, something that I haven't seen in a lot of videos is how to actually replicate that humming sound that is in the background and basically what you want to do is uh, you want to add some pink noise and add a sawtooth and you want want to make sure that the sawtooth is playing in the key of a sharp on the second octave uh, some people may not if you're not if you don't have an audio background that might sound really confusing but um basically you just want to make sure that is the key that the buzzing noise is typically set at. So I, I'm going to include this audio in a analog horror template pack uh, that I'll link in the description. And hopefully this will make a lot more sense once you actually open up the, the project file. But um, it, once you like if I can play this back. You may not be able to hear it. But uh, the sawtooth is that is the actual buzzing sound and the pink noise is that that shh, it's that sound that's being made in the background. So I have these two set at different decibel levels for the sawtooth. I have it set at negative 15 decibels and for the pink noise, I have it set at negative 45 decibels. Last but not least, I'm going to be covering the text portion of this video. Um, for the text, 
in analog horror typically what you want to download is this font called vcr osd mono um, that's a free download that you can get on a website like the font d-a-f-o-n-t dot com and uh basically that is it's uh, i mean right off the bat you can see that it's a very vcr style font so for example if you wanted to have uh, like a VHS tape being put in you could put play up at the top corner here and boom it looks very it looks a lot more authentic than say something like Helvetica um, another really subtle thing that you may want to do to either your text or your footage is adding just a little bit of a jitter to your footage to make it look uh, for some reason a lot of footage back then had like a very subtle jitter and I don't have it on my footage layer, but I do have it on my text layer. And so what you want to do is hold the alt key. Uh, well, first of all, you want to hit this little arrow right here next to transform. You, then you want to go down to position. And in this little stopwatch here, you want to hold down the alt button and then left click. Whoops, I undid it. <laughs> but basically uh, in this slot here, you want to put in, uh, you want to type in wiggle and in parentheses of the, uh, of your values. So what did I have before? For my values before, I had wiggle 20, 2. So that's exactly what you want to put in, just to give it a little bit of a jitter. So once we have all of our presets on the adjustment layer, and once we have our footage imported, what we can do is we can drag this footage below the adjustment layer and you'll see how it affects the footage. All right, well, I think that about wraps it up for this video. Uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed. If you guys want to actually get this template, I'll put the link in the description for download. Um, if you want to check out my other analog horror project, String Theory TV, I will also link that in the description as well. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.